22, 2023. If you don't mind, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Well, thank you all for being here. Uh, couple of you I met for the first time tonight, so I was happy to meet everybody. And a couple of you already said you're glad that we formed this committee again. Uh, when I was first elected, looking at all the advisory committees and the different things to appoint, there had been several issues when I was on the campaign trail that people addressed to me. And uh, the outgoing uh, city attorney, Ed Rucker, said, hey, this would be perfect for the Citizens Advisory Committee. So uh, we put together some notes, some ideas, and I have other things I want to uh, do. And when we first put them together, uh, I had a couple other things. Uh, one was a 2018 International Building Code, which I personally had problems with during the campaign, and a couple of other people uh, in, this, in the Osage Beach had talked to me about it. But it seemed like it was too much to bite right off the bat. And so we were gonna start with the two things on the agenda which were the food trucks and the OCHB sign ordinance, which were both things that were brought to me on the campaign trail. Uh, I'm not on this committee. I'm not part of this committee. My thing is to start it, and then we'll go into elections. But I just kind of wanted to give you a, a, a little bit of history. And the Citizens Advisory uh, Chapter 111, basically the committee will use a Robert Rules of Orders as edited by the Missouri uh, law. Meetings may be called by the mayor or the majority of the aldermen, and this is, I called this one. The agenda for the meeting shall be established by the mayor, and that's why we have two items on here. A majority of the men members appointed, uh, the advisory committee shall constitute a quorum. There's 10 people on the committee, so the six constitute the quorum. The city administrator may assign staff members to attend meetings. For the very first meeting, uh, talking to the city administrator, uh, she has Tara, if you know Tara, uh, here. If we need more in the future, uh, they can certainly assign other staff. Uh, but for tonight's meeting, just to get started, Tar is the only one. Um, and the uh, meetings of Osage Beach shall be on notice and conducted in accordance with Chapter 610 of the Missouri Constitution. So basically, the open meetings will be announced. Uh, we are on Facebook. And so those are kind of just the backgrounds of how we got here. Uh, the food truck. Um, giving you background on that too, you were all given a copy of the current, I believe it's called Peddler Solicitation and Canvasser Definitions and Exceptions. This is the food truck. If somebody wants to do a food truck in Osage Beach, this is what they have to come in and get. Um, during the campaign, in the first few months, many food vendors got a hold of me and, <clears throat> and said, this is ridiculous. You know, it's, it's 50 bucks in, around here. Everywhere else is $50. Uh, the brick and mortars with the Willies, the Wobbly Boost, all of those. Uh, I really don't know. I talked to Mark Baird a little bit about that before I did all this and said, are they really a competition? Said, yeah, maybe, maybe not. So we, uh, we were going to put this on the ballot in April, which we have to do. The board, the mayor, we cannot change this. And just for a little bit of history, back in August of 1993, this was a vote of the citizens of Osage Beach, Missouri, and which because it was a vote at that time means the aldermen do not have the, the power to change what the current fees are or the current structure because it was a vote on by the people. Uh, there was a city ordinance back in June 1993 where they stated that uh, the Board of Aldermen wished a peddler's license to be effective in protecting the citizens from undue annoyance. So that's why it was listed it as a peddler's law. Peddler, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. The Board of Aldermen wish to ensure the property existing citizens and businesses is protected for, from unreasonable competition. Business with fixed establishments provide for a safe and sanitary maintenance in the sewer system year-round, thereby promoting public safety and health. Peddlers receive the benefit of public safety and health without sharing the cost. So they put on the ballot any person de desiring a peddler's identification card shall complete an occupation license application and pay required $500, of which $100 uh, stays here, goes into general fund, the other goes to a fee, goes towards the sanitation fund for the city. And that's how we came about this. Wow. This went towards the public and was on the ballot 
back in August 3rd, 1993, and it was a yes or no. Shall a fee of $500 be charged for peddler's occupational license? And the vote was 312 yes to 84 no's. Yes, sir. How long is that permit good for? One year. Six, six months. months. Yeah. I'm sorry. So $500 for six months. Six months. Right. In addition to that, I believe they got to pay $35 per person working the booth, correct? Correct. Plus $100 deposit to the city, stay once they pay their taxes. Six months, eight hundred dollars. Okay, so five hundred bucks every six months, thirty-five bucks for people working in it, so forth. We go to Lake Ozark, anywhere else is fifty bucks a year. So, food I trucks. Think one of the things is well, our it, definitions are not well, and that's accurate. yeah, and that's what I want you all to look at. I just wanted to give you the history of it, and then I'm going to get out of it because the reason I brought it, I had a lot of food trucks come to me and say, especially with all the all of the development going on down here. Uh, they want to be able to have more. I had a couple initially chew me out, but I could go down to Lake Ozark and they could take my business. And I mean, we don't have the power. So what I'm hoping the committee will do is take a look at it. If it's something they want to change, then it would need to be a ballot issue. Next ballot will be in November. Go on in. Talk about food trucks. Uh -huh. uh, on the right side there is the current peddler's license for Osage Beach. Um, so that's the background on the food trucks, uh, just so you have it. The, the sign ordinance, uh, the other thing that we're going to look at, the background on that, again, during the campaign trail, I know, uh, Amy, you had some problems with LaRocca and her signs there. At one time, Chad had talked about some signs. I've had two or three other businesses talk about signs. Um, uh, I know when I was, when Harmony's was being built, the big 16-foot mouse on the side, you know, I was stopped by the city uh, eight years ago, nine years ago when I was putting that up. And, we were in the middle of putting that sign up on the side, and, and I was told I couldn't put that up. And I said, well, why is that? Because you've already seen the square footage of the front building. And I said, well, it's a picture of a mouse. Well, no, it says Harmony's Cheese. I'm like, well, no, it says Harmony's. All that being said, signs, there's another thing that's been an issue. So those are the two reasons I brought those two things to the Citizens Advisory Committee. Um, that's just the background. And then I'll be happy to answer questions later, but I'm not even really supposed to be a part of this meeting other than I, I call it and I just wanted to give you the background. So with that being said, we have a, a first thing on the agenda is a motion to elect the chairman. So I'd call for a first and a second, then you can, then you can elect the chairman and then we'll do the first and second on the uh, vice chairman and then I'll sit in the back and listen. So with that being said, do I have a motion to elect the chairman? Or do you want to talk? Uh, motion. Okay. Well, who wants to do it? Corey. Corey. <laughs> they said the last person here was going to be. <laughs> Corey <laughs> well, I guess here. that's right. Um, and it's interesting because that the signs and food trucks was something we talked about last time. Yeah. If I remember. Okay. okay. And uh, and the and the the power the you know the chairman has run the meeting, the vice chairman, and the, and the chairman's absence. So. I vote, uh, Corey, since he was on the committee last time and has okay. background okay. in uh, what so we are I'll doing. second that. Okay, so we have a nomination for Corey. We have a second. Chad, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's oppose. Aye. Aye. All right, Corey. Uh, I'm going to take over here. You're sure. going to get you in. And if you have any questions for me, I'll be sitting in the back. And thank you all for being here. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, get things right. done. Sorry. No, it's okay. Well, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. I was asking Tardy. Are you always Tardy? No, actually, I'm not. But <laughs> apparently, okay. I text your work because your work said that they kept you late. <laughs> well, the Federal Reserve is kind of busy right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, okay, so I guess the next uh, next item is the vice chair. Do we have any volunteers for the vice chair? <laughs> I don't know if we should elect Luke since he was our chair last time. Can I? Can you give me? Brief overview of what this committee is about and what we're going to be doing. Certainly. Right? Well, I think, yeah, that's going to be the next thing. Yeah, that's fall on deaf ears because we, no matter what the 
end of the day, the Board of Aldermen can yeah. have to say so over it. I mean, I don't, I don't really I pretty much feel like it did last time. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Pretty much feel like it did last time. We, we last time we presented a, a list of like 10 recommendations to the board and it sounded all good and well, but then I don't think anything ever really came of it. Nothing. Well, well, we have a direct on that list. What's that? We have an economic. I guess that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that did happen. That and I will say that it's similar to the Planning and Zoning Commission where you make recommendations, suggestions, and as a, as a commission, if you say, for instance, that uh, you feel as though after visiting with the public that it's warranted that we do $50 a year food truck license, then you would come to me and I would put it on the ballot or on the agenda and we would say, hey, we, here's on the agenda for $50 and they would say the uh, Citizen Advisor Committee looked at it and all went, well, what was the vote on the Citizens Advisory Committee? Well, it was a vote to nine to zero. So they would take your recommendations for that. They could ignore it, mm -hmm. but just like the planning and zoning, if they, you know, if they do suggest it. And, and I think the way that Mr. Mayor is approaching this committee different than the way we did it last time. Last time it was more of a blank page. It was kind of like, it was like, you guys come up with some ideas to uh, help economic development and businesses in the local, local area. And it wasn't any kind. It wasn't specific issues. It was just like no. a. Yeah, no, it was. It was like a blank page with no agenda. It was kind of hard to get anything, you know. Yeah, that would be my very first next thing after we get our vice chairs get our mission statement because I know last time when I came on, I was specifically told it was for development ideas. Mm -hmm. So when we started going off on these tangents oh, about yeah, I wasn't stuff, on the committee, I was very but confused. I did watch the committee meetings. I will agree with Luke. It was a lot of conversation and not a lot of action. Exactly. But I do think, like uh, Mr. Mayor, what you have done differently this year is you've given us some areas that we need to focus on. Yeah. And, that, and if we could be continue to be fed things more like that, yeah. or we can fix problems, I think we can actually get some stuff done. And, and that was my plan was, and, uh, and I'm thank, thanking Tara for not biting off more. We, we do these two and then we move on to the next two and so forth. Yeah. And you have a specific agenda. And you know, once those two are done, then we move on to the next one. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. So moving on, do we have our uh, nominations Amy? for our vice? Uh, Amy? <laughs> I hear Amy. Anybody second mm -hmm. that? I'll second that. Anybody else? No. I I Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Let me ask this: How many? How often are we having a meeting? Once a month. The, the, the mayor, the mayor, or the board of aldermen can call. I mean, it's up to the, it's at their discretion as to when they call it. They set the agenda. So. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would suggest that the board, you tell me, and then I would. We begin. tried to do once a once a month. Yeah. Yeah. Did that work for us? I don't know. Well, we were also it was in the early days of the post-pandemic world, or. Maybe we were in the middle of put, you know, so we had we had some COVID issues with the committee. We had a few other things that happened. Okay. Some quorum issues. There were several meetings that got canceled because we couldn't make quorum. Mm -hmm. And I guess the way I'm looking at this is you give yourself a timeline saying we would like to come up with some sort of advisory mm -hmm. on these two items within two months, three months, whatever. And then after that three month period of time, then you make your your, your opinions and we and we go from there. And, by then, I'll have the next two or three ready. And then, um, I guess the next thing, as we were just talking about earlier, is our mission. I'm trying to understand our purpose. Um, like I said, last time I was, last year, I was completely confused, apparently, what our purpose was. I think we all were. We and, were. Uh, I think I finally got it towards the end. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we were kind of figuring out. And, uh, you know. It is what it is, but my understanding of what this was last time, the intent of it, was to take ideas and suggestions from aldermen and run it through a citizen committee and see what we thought about it. And it didn't really matter what it was. Um, it wasn't necessarily focused on development, but of course it's top of mind with everything. But. Um, but it really was just, I, I look at it like this, no one shows up to the meeting, so this is another way to get the citizen input on things that the city's doing, because, you know, it would be nice to get something other than the alderman that discuss things every single time. So that's kind of what I looked at it. 
as towards the end. And I'm assuming that's kind of the purpose. Yeah. The way I envisioned this, and I may be totally different than past, was these two items specifically, discussions, maybe you get some sort of plan of action, say, well, I'm gonna to talk to several businesses, I'm gonna to talk to food truck vendors, maybe at the next meeting you can come back and report on that, and then maybe by the second or third meeting after that, you can come up with some sort of recommendation to the board that we suggest this for food trucks. Uh, we looked at the sign words, we think this is ridiculous. Think that's not true. But I think the, the key though was, rather than us sitting around trying to create an agenda of items, that those items were flowing to us from the board. Well, there is. There's just two items on this. Well, this time, yeah. but yeah. next meeting and the meeting after and the meeting after. Would that happen? I, I, I was not planning on doing okay. anything other than these two until these two are resolved. Okay. I guess that's where the confusion was with the last meeting is we kind of sat around and spitballed a bunch of different things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But I got the impression that towards the end that the real purpose was for upcoming agenda items or just things that the city was contemplating that run through the citizens advisory committee and get it and which means that the discussion topics would be coming from the city and not necessarily from us am i understanding that right? well and that's the way the code reads too okay. the code says the mayor and the board set the agenda for that okay, okay. Yeah. all right then i think having been present or watched several of the alderman meetings over the last couple of months. I think if the alderman and yourself would, in instances where you're running into a lot of conflict in the meetings and back and forth, that would be the time that I would say yeah. you would counsel our uh, group to figure out how to come to more of a understanding compromise, but as opposed to sitting there in those meetings and having you know, argument over argument over argument over what is coming about. So, for instance, these two items you've already brought to our attention. You know, these are things that people have been arguing about, talking about for four years. Well, now it's time that we get these finished and then, you know, move on to the next thing. And again, the economic development part is probably really important, but it seems to me right now there are four or five entities in the community working on that same idea well and if so, you as a board have a suggestion for me to put on the agenda for future i'd be happy to but yeah my plan is being very specific and, and now it's just these two things and, and uh, if you say hey we need to look at something else then we can but until these two resolve i have no intentions of adding anything to them. okay Dar? once the once the board and the mayor have established items for the agenda and according to the ordinance, the Citizen Advisory Committee shall elect a chairperson and a chair, vice chair to connect the meetings. The agenda for the meeting shall be established by the chairperson and vice chair and published by the city clerk. So once you guys have come up with your agenda items, so you guys come up with two, then you as a committee will go and determine what your next meeting is going to be. And then you guys will establish what, if you want to just do, do you want to tackle just the sign ordinance at the next one or you want to tackle the food truck at the next one? Then you go from there. And then once you guys have come up with how you're going to proceed with whatever then you go to the board with the next thing the mayor and the alderman don't come back with another agenda item until after that one is resolved so they're not going to come back and say the mayor's not going to go back next month and go now we're going to talk about something else so if you guys you know go do go out and do your homework and say we're going to do three months three weeks of research or whatever then we'll do another agenda and then you can come back and you let me know if you want to just do one or you want the same agenda then I'll post the agenda and you have another meeting. So you don't have to go back to the mayor or Gina to do another agenda with more items on it. See what I'm saying? So you just have to decide if you're gonna have a meeting next month or in six weeks or two months, however long it takes you to do whatever research you need to come up with. But right now you have your instructions from the mayor and that's the instructions they gave you for your sign and your food trucks. We get to start if that helps i don't know if that helps you on where you're headed with what you want to do but oh, there's yeah. nothing else according to the ordinance that's what your next steps are because <clears throat> you've already elected your chair and your vice chair now the agendas are set by you two on how you want you let me i'll publish from there according to the ordinance okay. thank you mm -hmm.
you want to critique the federal order and solicit her first? Which one you want to go? Or well, the sign? I really wanted it. So <laughs> it's funny that I, I mentioned this to <coughs> Alderman Ross not too long ago when we had our meetings last year. It's almost like we had a spy here from Lake Ozark. I mean, because everything we talked about, they did. Whether it was food trucks, not, no. Three months later, they were talking about food trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about tiny houses. Three months later, they were talking about tiny houses. Um, we were talking about the road and the boulevard and all that stuff. Next thing you know, they're doing the roads. Uh, we talked about rentals, rental policies. Well, you know, and I just, just seemed very funny. But well, anyway, those are also just hot topics that everybody's talking about. Well, I guess, but it just something yeah, so specific. Yeah. Food trucks just kind of took took me for a loop. I was like, how how is this anyway? Hmm. All right. Um, so, from a mission statement, I'm just thinking. Um, I just really kind of wanted to get this out of the way because I know that that was missing in our last one. And I'm just looking at it as advising city management on local topics or policies to be considered uh, by the board of all. Solutions just, to be considered. With solutions. Advise city management on local topics or policy, policies. To be considered <clears throat> by the board of all. By city management on local topics or policies to be considered by the board of aldermen. I have a question. Yeah. Does do the people have to vote if we change anything on that, or is it the aldermen? Change anything on what? On the application on like peddler. Yeah. The application. Yes. Yeah. It has to it be has here. Here. We'll have to have a vote. Okay. So how? Ballot change. If we change it. Is it an alderman vote or is it go on that? Uh, you vote by the citizens of Osage Beach. Because this was voted on by the citizens in 1996. Three. Yeah, so now the only way to change this as it is is to go back, is to to go back and have a vote on it again. But you're specifically talking about the application itself. Yeah. Like, yes. Like, well, you that's make, important. Yeah. But I'm, what I'm saying, I, mean, I don't think you need a vote to change wording on an application. I would think that. But if you're changing the policy. Right. Yeah. But if it's just. Yeah. If you're just changing the application. The application. That is me. Sorry. Well, I'll work on this mission statement. Maybe we'll work on that at the next meeting. I'll try and have my thoughts together a little bit better. I'm mm -hmm. still spinning. Um, and since we've already moved to the food truck topic, I guess we can start tackling that. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess we can start with. As the policy sits, what are the, what are the biggest thing the the biggest thing we consider? I think the, the food truck operators are upset about the fine. That's it. So that's what we need to talk about. And I have my personal opinions. When you're ready for it, I'll get I'll give them to you. I think at the last meeting we we suggested dropping the fee dropping to like fifty bucks or something. Mm -hmm. If I remember right. I don't, no, I, I don't think I would have been on board with that because I, I imagine you're not on board. Uh, I, I imagine my thoughts are, are pretty similar to Chad's, would be my guess. You know, for me being an everyday business, that all of the stuff I have to pay for in a yearly basis to operate is outrageous. Mm -hmm. And for these people fly by night to come in and set up a shop and not have to pay all the costs that I incur throughout the year is ridiculous. And um, maybe, sure, yeah. maybe we could have, uh, if they want a one day permit, to, to set up a booth for one day, maybe lower to $25, $50, but for six months, $500 is cheap. You know, they're setting up on property that's, you know, property taxes I gotta pay, $500 for six months is nothing. That's minimum. Maybe well, I do an option where they can get a one day or a three day weekend for a festival down here, which works lower cost. And I think that's kind of what, what I'm really racking my mind around what, what the how the conversation was, but I know that there was a policy in regard how how it was handled during events versus someone just running around outside of an event. 
and, totally. what, and whether they were invited onto the property or not. Are these people required to get business license and all of that, just like we Health are? permits. Well, that, yeah, that's the, the, the safety part of it is, is the other part that concerns me because somebody comes in from out of town or you know, they bring their rat infested trailer from, I'm not going to disparage another neighboring town, but from a neighboring town and from a neighboring county and mm -hmm. they come into our county and our city, are they subject to health codes? Are they subject to inspections? Do they, you know, you know, and how, how is that covered? You know, if they're, if they're just coming in for a one day deal, we don't want somebody coming into our city, giving a bunch of our citizens in Salmonella and then blowing town the next day. And I think that's what the committee should do is, is maybe assign a couple of people to find health codes. Cause I do know that uh, they do need a help. They are, they are uh, in, ex inspected. They have to have their, their stuff at a certain location. There's a lot of things that rather than me rattling them off and be maybe wrong, that maybe that's something you do as a committee saying, hey, well, yeah. in, in the code, though, it doesn't mention any kind of requirements for that, does it? No, but I believe in like uh, Lake Ozark, I looked at their policy a while back and they do have to list inspections. Anyway, so if you looked at other towns, codes, policies, it might help you guide what you want yeah, to do. That's what I would say. We need to pull the one from Camden and Lake Ozark and see what theirs is. My thought and question is do we need good trucks? Well, that's, I kind of have to stand with what Chad Luke had to say in regards to I'm one of the guys that pay those taxes, pay those things, and pay, pay, pay. And my goodness gracious, the cost of just getting your parking lot approved will shock you. So nevertheless, anyway, so yeah, I, I'm not for making it easier on them. My question is, should, you know, how much should we allow it? I think it has a place, but I don't know if it's an everyday application. Well, that's what you guys are to discuss. Yeah. Well, also, the... Farmer's Market, every Saturday is it, they have food trucks there. Do, what yeah. do they do? Sometimes our church has food trucks. Where's yeah, the Farmer's have. Market at? Oh, Over right. the first bank of the lake? Yes. Yeah. You know, those situations would be, uh, that's an exception, you know, especially type of thing as far as your church occasions and things like that. I'm, not, I'm just talking about the up and down the, the parkway and things like that. That's where I'm at. That's what my thoughts are. Yeah. I saw one outside the dispensary or was it today or yesterday when I was driving. I think it was today I was driving around. Well, Latitude has had two trucks there every day for like the past two weeks. Woody's has trucks. And, and they are licensed no safety. Yeah. yeah, I do know that. But I, I don't think that $500 for six months is too expensive. I mean, no, no. I don't like all this either, but I'm just not, I don't think you guys are going to get rid of food trucks. It's the, it's, it's kind no, of a going really thing. Is going and you're going to have, we're going to have to figure out how to, Work with them in the same community. Well, like I said, I'm not necessarily going to get rid of them necessarily. I just, like, like I said, it's just, it's got to be equitable to those brick and mortar stores who do pay the fair share and pay for the cops all year long, pay for everything all year long. You know, you know, obviously Bob and Chad get along, but you know, if Bob wanted to really stick it to Chad one day, he could pick, you know, Super Bowl Sunday and bring a uh, a, a truck to park in his parking lot and sell chicken wings for 50 cents cheaper than Chad was and undercut him on Super Bowl Sunday. You can't do that. It's all the guidelines, covenants that we had drawn up with, with the property, so that none of that shenanigans go on. We're but I'm saying theory. I'm, in, in theory, but true, because I know you guys know your yeah. neighbors. Yeah. The same thing could happen down the road to anybody. Well, one of the things I see right off the bat is our, our um, definition yeah. of what a peddler, solicitor, slash what a food truck is is not this is not accurate to what we're talking about yeah definitely. so it's almost as if we need to write something that is specific to food trucks and those owners and is not related to this one that's already in place but I, but I don't think it really matters if it's food or if somebody wants to set up a mobile tire store and park next to big up <laughs> Or, you know, well, that's what I'm saying. This is more describing a person who doesn't necessarily have a business license or a, you know what I mean? Like somebody's just sitting at the table in your parking lot and deciding to sell a bunch of stuff. Right. But I do think there is a difference, though. You, and I was going to mention that as well, that, you know, selling tires is one thing, but selling food, you know, with the health and, and, all, right. and all that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're... Maybe this needs to be expanded, or or maybe just a completely separate one. Well, yeah. What I'm saying, this work, this particular ordinance covers a tire salesman 
somebody set up a jewelry shop, you know, whatever, it, it covers all of it. And you're right, there maybe needs to be more specific carve outs for the food trucks as opposed to it, you know. So that's what I mean, maybe we can talk about that. Like, mm -hmm. would we need to approach this in more of a way that we need to write a specific ordinance by way of not necessarily getting a vote from everyone in the community, but by way of the way we normally write an ordinance? No, this this one got passed by a vote, so to, to change it, yes. That's what I'm saying. We, we put together a totally different one. Right, and then, and then we'd have to present that, educate the community, right. and then get the vote on it. Yeah. Well, and you, yeah, sorry to jump in, but yeah, you would be basically suggesting the board do that, and then the city attorney would write the ordinance yeah. to the board. Then. Right, sure. Right. Suggestions to the board, and then the board would give it to the city attorney. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I skipped a few steps there, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that, I mean, even the application itself, I mean, obviously the fees and everything are already there, but if you added an additional line, if it was uh, food related, the following requirements need to be provided. I don't necessarily see that. I think food should be different from everything else. Because like you said, we get a, get a lot of um, poisons. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about adding a different option for a one or two day permit at a lower cost? Um, of doing six months. Well, I know in a um, did some of this work before. Um, we had a very specific event, uh, uh, like permit for events. Now, what qualifies as an event? I, you know, that's going to be the next question. But you know, the one or two day someone's having you know you're having the arts festival or you're having a veteran ceremony or something you could you know get the permit for that specifically and you could set your fee schedule based on that one event or that one two day time period versus having a permanent truck roaming the streets year round yeah. uh, we there was a distinction between the event driven and versus a permanent license well, I will say uh, if the city sponsors an event like we were sponsoring the food truck event this year, then they do get a two-day permit. Okay. But that's specific, specific to sponsored by the city of Osage Beach. And that would be an event as well. Sponsored by the city. Is that like the one that's moving over here from Lower or whatever? Right. Yeah. In that case, those people can come in for just a two-day permit, right? Like an only on the city, only at the park. They right. can't travel. Right. Just for those two days at that park. Yeah, they're far away, but what do you think about right. being not allowing them within so many feet of a direct competitor, you know, like a guy going across the street from my restaurant selling chicken wings a dollar cheaper right across from me, you know? And that's because he don't have the overhead costs that I have. You well, know? just to be clear, I'm not advocating we change it. I'm just saying this has been brought up, so that's why it's on you guys. So tell me again about what you're allowing for the food truck event, the food, the one that's coming up. Well, it's sponsored by the city of Osage Beach. So for two days at the city park in April 29th, 30th, they mm -hmm. pay like a $25 fee or something like that for the week, the weekend. So, so for, they pay that to the city to right. come and build a park for, <coughs> for a city sponsor. In addition to the fact that they've already paid for this. No, they don't have to pay this. No, it's a special event permit. That's a special event sponsor. Is it $25 per day? No. Or per, per vendor. So it's kind of like a booth. For event. A, it's right. almost like a booth rental. Correct. Yeah, for that for that event sponsored by this, but it has to be sponsored by the Osage Beach. Okay. And then they're still paying city sales tax and doing all that stuff. And they have to go through the health department. They have to do all the same stuff. Right. That they have to do with that. Right. Yeah. In my opinion, I don't. I, I don't think we should change it. It's my opinion. Well, I guess that would be the thing. What causes this to be? I know we talked about it last year. Now mm -hmm. we're talking about it again this year. I mean. Is it, I mean, I'm hearing, you're thinking $500 is well, too I, unreasonable. As a person who does events, mm -hmm. I can tell you every single time I call to have a food truck park in my parking lot, the number one thing I get is, well, I had to pay $500 to even operate <clears throat> for the first six, whatever it is, it'll be here. And sometimes, you know, you get food trucks who, if you want them to come to an event, let's say I'm holding a dance and I want food. 
some of them will go, okay, it's two hundred and fifty dollars for me to come <coughs> on your property and and do the food and then they make all the money off it. Some of them will be willing to, you know, if they know that you're gonna have five hundred people at your event, won't charge you anything because they know they're gonna make a ton of money. So I think one of the problems is is it's just there's nothing real structured about how any of the food truck stuff is done right now. You know, nobody operates the same way. Everybody's different. Depends on what kind of sales they are doing. Depends on what they're selling. I mean, I'm sure the two people that are parking at the distillery for the last two weeks, they're they're probably not paying anything to sit on that parking lot. They're just making money from the the residual customers the distillery is getting. So. You, know, you know, food trucks in the big cities, you know, obviously, you know, they're successful in high traffic areas, you know, office complexes where there's a lot of foot traffic and things like that. And they, they kind of fill a need right. in an area or big construction sites or areas like that. Osage Beach, that you, what foot traffic is there really in Osage yeah. Beach? Anybody who's going to a food truck in Osage Beach is seeking it out, right? They're, they're going there. It's not, it's not, you know, the, the origin of food trucks was to serve a large population of people who all kind of eat, eat, eat lunch all at the same time. We're all kind of in one area. Osage Beach really doesn't have like there's no foot traffic here. I mean, it's not that's just not the way our city is. I agree. But don't uh, like school. It's don't present. They have people that could use that. Stone Crest does. What is the school there? Is oh, there? like the state fair or, or yeah, the state fair. Yeah, yeah. those people. Even the hospital. Well, it sounds like what you're defining is there could be a category of sponsored trucks. So if you're, as a business, you want them there. I think one of the things we need to look at is how other cities are handling it. For instance, Bentonville, Arkansas, they have a really good uh, ordinance with them. They have spots within their city where food trucks are allowed to park for a fee for a certain amount of time. So maybe we need to look at a city like that, who's got very specific guidelines as to where the trucks are allowed to park, how long they're allowed to be there, and for what amount of money. You know, because in some places in Bentonville, there's food trucks parked right downtown across from City Hall, but and there's a specific location. You know, there's coffee shop around the corner and a brewing company around the other corner, but they're not allowed to park right next to them or in their parking lot or kind of like Chad was suggesting. There's a specific spot. But I still think there's there's a carve out there for a business that wants to put one on the property as well. A sponsored truck of some kind. I don't know. like what's your, what's a what's a business like what's a regular business license fee these days like what are you like what are you paying to the city like as besides your water sewer and that kind of stuff well i mean i gotta pay you know, 25 dollars a year 50 and then i have to pay one for the county as well um because like, you're talking about 500 bucks for six months and if you set up every day in that six months like, you know yeah make the money back you know that's why i'm saying i think we should add an option for like you get a special one or two day permit at a lower price if they, they want know, to buy it for a six month period keep it 500 that's not it's outrageous for and that was that was yeah. Yeah. thank you for you that's right was it 93 yeah. yeah. and it's been 500 yeah. since 93 yeah. so that is in 93 500 yeah. was different than that than 500 is today right yeah but they're coming out now yeah yeah. Do we know why this was written then? Do we know what? Why this was written yeah, then? I wonder. It doesn't sound like it was written for the purposes of food trucks, is my point. Well, the statute wasn't even food trucks. They, they specifically said peddlers. Peddlers. Which we like. Uh, I mean, this word is almost people. more like they were focusing like on your farmer's market. Kind of people, not on somebody who's selling food. Well, I remember the there. snow cone people. They used to set up on the corner. Yeah. Well, you drive through Springfield, and you see the pineapple whip with the lady, the hula lady on top of it. You know, and there's a rain of parking lots. And... Yeah, food was not mentioned in here. Right. So it's like they had a problem with something else. 
Somebody was setting up something else. Yeah, because food, food trucks are trendy in 93. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, they, they existed, but they weren't like. Not like now. Well, well reality yeah. TV shows based around them. Mm -hmm. Honestly, based upon whatever recommendations that come out of here, it may dictate what winds up happening, whether or not it can be addressed with what's currently on the books with a little bit of modification or whether they got to write something completely new. Right. Possibly, I would imagine. I mean, I don't know, you know, you could probably change the application a little bit. Because this even mentions if you seek donations. I have a uh, question for the mayor. What type of people were questioning the, the amount? Oh, food trucks. Food trucks. Yeah, they have a food truck coalition now that they're becoming bigger and bigger. Mm. And uh, well, maybe we need to hear from them. Yeah, there you go. And do we invite them and hear their side of it, and like what they're, you know, and, and let them kind of talk to us a little bit about their their position. We can we can explain ours, and maybe that's where you find some compromise in there. There you go. I'll be happy to give you the numbers. Uh, the uh, Bless this burger, this out at latitude. I would just uh, Alice, the gal that owns the coffee shop, Alicia Allison. Anyway, uh, she's the president of the board, the new coffee shop down KK. Uh, yeah, that's Aristica. a great idea. I'm sorry. Aristica? Yeah. But uh, I'd be happy with that. That's a great idea. And that's kind of another thing. You know, we're sitting here talking about their business like we, know, like we know anything yeah. about it. You know, I mean, like I said, I've seen reality shows. I've worked in the restaurant business, but I ain't never. Been on food show. No, that's a great idea. Yeah. So, <coughs> some of the action items, you know, no changes to the fees, um, designated locations, um, possibly health and inspection. I think that's important. Requirements. Health, yeah. Um, I mentioned possibly having a carve out for a sponsored truck, meaning a business wants them there. And now we have the meeting with them. Vendors. I think that's a good idea to find out what they're thinking. Yeah. So it's good to both sides. And like like Amy said down a bit, Bill, I don't I wouldn't like to see him set right up across from my restaurant. You know? No, Bentonville's a much more popular area too. They're justified with that kind of situation. And to say we're not there yet. You know, in the designated location, if we were to say like we're talking about so it does need to be addressed here. Here, here. About. you could also include probably some language in that that dictates how close you could be to a competing business or something like that, or or at the very least make the designated location yeah. somewhere that's not anywhere around yeah. some of the businesses. So. I mean, there are times where they are needed. Yeah. As you said, I mean, you have softball tournaments around the city park, or you right. know, and you know maybe some events like that. Yeah, they they're needed there. But. What about like the the parks, <coughs> the city park? Yeah. But that's my opinion. Five hundred for six months, one or two day permit, or cheaper. Get park next next year. Better uh, business. I still would like to hear that's from the the people that are. And what type of the merchant? Well, we would be set up every week. Yeah. Weekend. There are, they must have a plan. Yeah. So I'd like to hear their plan. What do they want? Yeah. And why? You know, like when Bless Burgers was setting up their Woody's there for a while before that got shut down. Yeah, I think it was really fulfilling the need because he was doing it later at night when there wasn't any other restaurants. So, you know, the taco shop next door was shut down and stuff like that. I thought he was actually closing a little bit earlier, you know. And that's, you know, that's the time of night. Not as much open, and blah, blah, you're not really competing with anybody else for like late night food. There's no a lot of late night food options out there. So, you know, hmm. I don't know what I'm trying to say with that. I was, I was just thinking about that. Well, you're right. Meeting. On this side of the lake, there's, or on this side of the bridge, there's not. Right. Yeah. And I think it's hours of operation. Yeah. Yeah. This is the, he's on the food truck coalition. That's it. So do we want to say what items we need to like collect for the next meeting so we can have a more informed discussion? Well, really, um, collecting-wise, it would be 
meeting with these other vendors or how the vendors that are out there yeah. at least yeah. a couple what of them. They otherwise it's i don't know what else well and then the agendas or, or not agendas but the or ordinances from, from other cities, from other cities. Uh, those would be two action items to i mean on. other than their uh, fee being lower and they go are what else is there that makes it so yeah, but they're not allowed on the strip right no they're not not unless the only way I think they get there is if a like a restaurant says you can sit here because I paid for it, so they can sit there. So how how is like that, what's that language? Yeah, I mean, that like the Knights of Columbus because Fusion Taco sat over there for three or four months during a certain period of time. What mm -hmm. allowed that? Yeah, it'd be interesting to see our neighboring communities what they're. And then, and it's always so hard to find a, because we, we deal with this with the chamber all the time, like trying to find a comparable community to ours. You know, because even when you look at Branson, we're not Branson, when you look at other lake communities or other tourist communities, it's hard to find a good comparison. Uh, when we were uh, working on our job description for our executive director, we looked at a bunch of different chambers and looked at, and it was funny, Juneau, Alaska, of all places, uh, was one we relied upon a lot because we we liked it. It was you know, our community is nothing like Juneau, Alaska, but they had some good stuff there. And it's always hard to find that that comparable community to say, oh, that's a community like us. We should do what they're doing because, you know, especially all us lake people, we like to think we're super unique. But we are. Oh well, yeah. <clears throat> but I think we can find some comparable stuff out there and see you know just because. I think it makes sense to look at what Branson says, just to see what there says. Well, I, think I think it makes sense to look at a bigger place like Bitten Mill, make look at a smaller place like, you know, I don't know. I don't, my point being is, I don't want to be the city that deters people from doing business here, but I also don't want to take away from the businesses that are already established here. There's got to be some middle ground between what Camden is allowing and like Ozark is allowing that won't turn us into don't ever go to Osage Beach. Can and you put does the county distance place? Yeah, you know, specify you cannot do it within blah blah amount from a restaurant. You have to be right. Well, that is, one of the, that yeah. is one of the questions. Yeah. yeah. What about the fireworks they go in hmm. outside the city? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's pretty universal, actually. <laughs> it seems like but every, it, city, that it happens, allow, every yeah. city that doesn't have fireworks, you, as soon as you get But we've got them. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So, what's our game plan? Well, the game plan is uh, uh, table this for the next meeting so that we can have the vendors present. And then, um, you know the action items are, are well the suggestions are you know no changes to the fees mm -hmm. uh designated locations uh possible inspection health uh, requirements for the mm -hmm. for the food vendors um carve outs for a sponsored truck of some kind see what how lake ozark is doing it um of course gathering up some of the outside ordinances or other resolutions or what have you and then maybe even consider hours of operations and how that might impact. Do you want to sign assign somebody here to take each one of those? Um, so no, that you I mean, don't have to do them all? Well, do we have any volunteers? How about that? Mm -hmm. If you, if you, I mean, if you want me to dig around and see what other cities are required for food truck, I can start to do that. And if you go to their, uh, their city page, Osage Beach City Hall, normally just follow the prompts. Food yeah. trucks. I mean, ours happen to be pillars. It's hard to find, but most other ones. Like I go out, grab a couple, six, ten of them. See, and I, I know Tristan from Bless Burgers, so I can if, if, I can reach out to Tristan. We went to school together, so do we have a? Is that the vendors? That's one of them, man. Yeah. Well, you you mentioned another one though, didn't you? That you well, know. that guy has two trucks. Hot too. He has because uh, mm -hmm. Tristan does an orange truck. Right, right. He's got a partner. So, uh, and he also has. The other truck is the taco truck that he owns. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Do we know of any other? Taco or taco? Well, you said there's a coalition of them, right? Wicked Sugar food truck. I know them. Who? Wicked, Wicked Sugar. I don't think they have a food truck, though. 
it's not a truck, it's just a booth. I think they just go to different locations that invite them there and they go on, on property, I believe. Mm. Trust the board of regulations on that. I would assume it falls on this. Well, that's like a caterer. They do that. That's that. Yeah, yeah that well, is. Well, but the if they're selling, are they selling retail? She, yeah, yeah, she's selling cakes and desserts and all that. I mean, that's like me ordering cakes from IV and then telling them starting it. Or I got a, I'm assuming she has a caterer's license, a business caterer's license. I don't know license. what she's got. Do you know anything? I'm sorry. What Wicked you? Sugar? Mindy Bolnar? She has a business license. Yeah. A bull on business license. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So from this conversation, we're saying that as long as the food truck is on private property and it's welcome there, there's no need to address it. Oh, no. They, they have to have a, if they're on private property, they have to be invited, but they have to pay the fee. They okay. still have to pay. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So that that still stands then. All right. All right. Like, for instance, so I have an event venue. If I were to hire, I can't remember her name from Wicked Sugar right now. Mindy. Mindy. So I might hire her to come in and sell cupcakes or just serve cupcakes at my location. But she has a business license. I don't need to do anything but pay her her fee. And she leaves. she's not operating out of a truck or anything. She's just bringing it and dropping it off. She's like a caterer. Yeah, caterer. Mm -hmm. And it's different. Yeah, that's totally different. Yeah. <clears throat> I actually think they're pretty smart in the fact that they did it. They do it that way and not trying to operate out of the truck. It's easier for them. But the phenomenon of food trucks is huge right now. And it's, I know. It's, it's going to keep going. So probably need some clarity around that difference between a caterer versus a vendor versus a food truck. Well, and I'll just fill this out. I'm sorry to interrupt again, but um, I was stuck with this too. And that's why I talked to Mark Barrett because I said, hey, before I stick my neck out, I mean, this is a guy that pays brick and mortar and been here for a long time. I don't want to offend him. And he's like, yeah, maybe it's competition. I don't know, really don't think about it. But uh, on the city side of it, in the next couple of years, I see literally hundreds of construction workers down at the Oasis site. Um, if the mall gets up and going, um, and I'm seeing hundreds of workers going, hey, I've got 45 minutes for lunch. <clears throat> what am I going to do? And on the city side, I see a lot of revenue coming to city way. If, if they had a food truck and we were getting 2% of everything, those construction workers. That's a good idea. But that's why you're right, it's a fine line between yeah. the brick and mortars and and she said, I'm not going to go to a Sage Beach. I got this nice food truck. And then, but and that's why I wanted to, you guys to talk all this out and see if we can't come with a compromise. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess, I guess we'll recommend to table this thing until the next meeting after we gather up a little bit more information. Is there, uh, have you got a list of uh, things we can do? Yeah, we're just talking about it. Um, okay. Really, in terms of do outs, if you will, um, it was talking to the other vendors well, yeah. and then gathering up the ordinances. So the we're going to get Bless Burger to come in. It, you said it's he, he's the one that's the head of that? No, I believe. Okay, yeah. I think we reach out to the coalition and just. Yeah, of the so. I just, I'm familiar with Tristan. That's, right. that's why I keep bringing that one up. I said we just invite the, the group. And then whoever wants to show up and voice their opinion can do that. Yeah, and I might suggest too, you don't have to assign anybody, but you know, talk to your fellow business owners, your friends, and hey, what's your thoughts on it? And try to get some consensus from what people say if you're out of it. Yeah, and I, I've kind of been doing that ever since we got the agenda in the first place. And I was, I was talking with Gina Fitzpatrick on my, at, at the ribbon cutting room before I came over here. What do you think about food trucks? What do you think about signs? What did she about say? It. She said she didn't want to sign blocking her view of the lake. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's true. Yes. All right. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. we got to make a motion to table an item, but. So moved. Second. Good job, Corey. Yeah. 
All right, next item to discuss is a uh, motion to move on to the next uh, agenda item, sign <laughs> Signs. Yeah. What are some of the issues surrounding yeah. it? Thank you. We need to, well, there's my main issues is yeah, this long. Yeah, there's quite a bit of information there. So this may take a while to talk about, or you may want to read it when you get back. But I know Amy, you had some problems. I know Chad, one time you had some problems. So if you want to share or whatever, and you may say there's nothing to change. And again, these are things that have come up, so that's why we wanted to. Um, so, what did anybody <clears throat> have any personal issues with the signed ordinance? I think it's kind of arbitrary, in my opinion. Um, when the size of the sign is limited by your square footage, square footage of your building, and square and your highway frontage, that determines the size of your sign. Mm -hmm. I understand you have to come up with some some way or way to do it. So you think if you're going to do it, so you think of the laws are too strict. Is that what you're getting at? My typical thought when it comes to anything is, if the government's going to tell me what to do with my stuff on my property, they got to have a damn good reason why. It's almost like having a, in a subdivision that had what do they call those. Like the, the homeowners association, and like, yeah, yeah, sure. And the other, my other part of it was, I was driving down KK today. And obviously, at a certain point there in KK, you go from being inside city limits to outside city limits, right? So all of a sudden, the ordinance changes. So that's like the wild west of sign ordinance out there. But yeah. as I'm driving down KK, it doesn't seem like the lack of a sign ordinance down in KK is affecting quality of life. There's a couple more billboards right across the city limits. There's a couple billboards right there. That I don't think would have been allowed in the city, but otherwise, I don't see a lack of a sign ordinance in the unincorporated parts of our community causing a big problem. To my, to, to me. Back when this was, I mean, I'll be real honest. Our ordinance was so long, I gave up. And that's yeah, that's it's it's tough because you can yeah. go look at other which I did for a while city ordinance on signs, and it's like five pages long. This thing is, I don't even know what it's 18 20 pages. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's lengthy. Yeah, it, it's just lengthy. And I think having not been around when this was, I think it just was added to and added to and added to, probably without looking at what it previously said, which has made it so long. I mean, what applied in 1973 to all of our businesses certainly doesn't apply today in 2022. Well, and I think if you read it closely, too, I don't feel like we're actually enforcing it as it's, it's written. Just, no, it's just we're not. I mean, because I was like, after reading it and driving around town, there are several things in here that I see all, you know, especially the ones about well, signs that are yeah. like out of uh, date or whatever, basically. The date, yeah, I noticed that too. I, 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 how long has State Bruners had their sign up there? Right. When's the last well, time I got State Gloucester? Well, well, they have a lot of these laws you grandfathered in. A lot of these restaurants are grandfathered in, right? Right, but the ordinances so like the but, city can't but make as far as out of date and, 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 and out of uh, but and going deteriorating, that, that's a different situation. Yeah. yeah. But like like Chateau, like Chateau right there, all those signs. Are, I was just I was kind of looking at signs today when I was driving around. I noticed that too, yeah. And but, in the ordinance, it says somewhere. If you're not selling the product or the business isn't open, the sign should be there after six months. Or I don't remember exactly how it reads, but it's something to that effect. And we're not enforcing that. And there's stuff about screamers and flyers and the amount of signs. You drive by the Topsider uh, development, there's half a dozen signs. They got the goofy yeah, men with the hair thing to jump around, all those things. And I, you know, mm. I don't think all that's compliant. Well, I agree with it needs to be streamlined. Yes. Where it's much more easy to understand for the individuals. Yeah, because if you're a if you're a, a new business owner trying to open up and you just want to put a sign up and you're not familiar with reading city code, because city code, just like anything, can get a little Yeah. And if you're not familiar with reading it, I can see being totally intimidated and just being like, I give up. So this one thing says prohibited signs, moving signs comes to mind because I pass it almost every day. 
the Dominicos. I knew. The Dominic. mole. It's the moving sun, and it's not there all the time. All it has sudden, been. Well, it has been lately, yeah, but it does. It moves. Yeah, it does. So what? What can you do about it? It's been. I mean, my lord, I've been here for long years, and it's. Yeah, they used to pull it back. Yeah, maybe. they used to pull it back more, yeah. but. Well, Wobbly Boots does the same thing with their catering vans. But that's that's an address in here. That's a yeah. But they probably there, there's something about that. I was reading that, but yeah. there's something about the vehicles are all right and blah, yeah. blah, but, but if it stays there for too long. But they move. Yeah, they, move. they do move. At, uh, what what's good advertisement? But I don't I don't, I don't have what an do issue you? with them and what they're doing. Yeah. Oh. I agree. When you're just promoting your business on your own property. I don't see why. You know, we well, it's in it. here, so. Yeah, and I think that was the big topic from last year. From it was mainly the height and the size. Yeah. Was what kept coming up. I remember um, just last year because you and I both were talking with Mark at Mark's Mobile Glass. But he had a 50 foot sign sitting on the front of his building next to me with that bottle. I mean, if it's if it's blocking the view of my building from traffic coming the other way, then yeah. Just like have well, some of in here. Both sides. Both sides. Now, well, yes and no. At one point, he owned all three pieces of property. So if you counted them all together, yeah. the amount of footage he had. He could put up a, I don't know what the exact number was, but it could have been a quite large sign. No, is there, there a difference between right signage attached to the building right. as opposed to in the grass out front or <laughs> right, that was rock out front? Yeah, there's it, 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 it gets real specific about all of it again. Yeah, if you start talking yeah. through it, you start. Yeah, I know, I tried reading it today. Your brain starts going, I'm trying to get up. Talk about the suggestion on the sign because there's a lot of things. You know, Terry Patterson is very good at understanding all these and uh, maybe give yourself some time to read it, digest it, come up with questions and answers, and invite him to the next meeting to ask the questions that you have. Uh, he, he'd be willing to be here. And he asked me today, should I be there? I said, I don't think so yet. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's some things that have specific <laughs> questions on it. I, I don't have any issues with signage attached to the building. For size or whatever that no. it'd be marquees out front blocking traffic, you know, safety for people pulling out of driveways and stuff like that. Um, but being attached to the building, I don't. I think I should put my name on as many times as I can around my building. You know, they find you then. Hmm? I said they'll find you then. Yeah, but if it's attached to the building, I don't see why. What's that's bothering anybody? It, it, it's it. Like you said you wanted to put that big, that big mouse up on your side of the building. That's your. I don't see why not. Hmm. I don't see any issues with that. And, and but and again, you drive up and down. And you, this part about incidental signs where it says no more than four incidental signs not exceeding forty square feet in total coverage areas should be attached to any single building wall face. So that yeah, I don't I, I don't agree with that. So I mean, but there's a, again the the selective enforcement of this. You drive up and down those feet Parkway. Without naming names, there are several businesses that have several signs right. that exceed 40 square feet in total. Chief that needs to be looked at as far as does it need to be there. Right. It'd be interesting to see the enforcement history. I, that's so what I was going to ask. Who okay. enforces so, that? It's there's no there's different from the pet problem. And, and I just, anytime there's selective enforcement, it always bugs me because it punishes the rule followers. You hit up all the rules and you followed it. Other people don't. You know. Well, and I, I also think the grandfathered in portion of it is getting a little old. You know, Do they have uh, a now we've got such a hodgepodge of somebody that's fathered in 25 years ago and somebody that's brand new. You know, you've got a sign that looks like shit over here from the guy that was grandfathered in, and then well, these people are 
you know, being there, forced it, to do a new sign. It addresses that in, in regards to signs decaying and, and not being kept up. Right, but, but that's not to. exactly, that's my point. Yeah, I'm with you. You know, I've never gotten a good answer on grandfather. It can't be forever. Yeah. Well, it's well, like a perfect example. I, I think it was wobbly whenever they took over the Sony's building. If they they had to keep that sign, but they couldn't put another one back up that size. If they took it down, they weren't going to be allowed yeah, to put one back up. And they had to use that grandfather's sign that. and use it. Mm -hmm. and it, happened, it just happened a couple other places. Well, I'm yeah. to, I mean, I feel like in regards to that, as long as whoever in regards to just like the Corby Secret sign, that thing was up, put up probably back in the 70s. Because it was there with purchased property back when it was the company's Jubilee well, that's mm -hmm. right. theater. Anyway, mm -hmm. nevertheless, uh, just maintaining one of those things is is very expensive, and replacing one is, you know, almost you know unless you just have to put brand new up. I don't see you enforcing anybody that's grandfathered in of modifying that sign because of the expense factor. Yeah. I mean, I'd tell you to kind of cut it down. That's what it goes to, you know. <laughs> and they're that expensive. And they're 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 just terrible. Maybe six, yeah. But if they're maintained real well and not a, and not an obstruction, you don't have any complaints on it. I don't know why there would be a problem as far as continuing to allow the grandfather in unless they let them decay and I saw them. Which well, there's some of those around. If you're a business in business, why wouldn't you want to keep your sign up? Sure you would. You know what I mean? But so you, you don't need to have to spend the money to modify it because of any grand, not grandfathering issues as long as the sign is made. Yeah. They need to refresh it. Yeah, yeah you have there's to keep plenty good, of ways good, these you know, days to put up a sign that's reasonably priced so that can look good. It starts looking old, and then we have yeah, um, work vehicles there on your property. a dead city. My point on anyway. grandfather wasn't necessarily specific to science, though. It's just the clause in general. Oh, the whole grandfather issue. You know, no, it, it applies to so many things in oh, this sure. area, mm -hmm. and we battle with it. You know, just internally at the homeowners association, grandfather. You know, hammer and change lot lines. You know, you have docks that are in other people's property. Now. So even when it comes to signs, though, I just kind of we're trying to figure out what is. When are you no longer grandfather? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we find that out? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's something we struggle with on topics way, way beyond signs. But I'd be curious. A lot of people say if the property is sold and changes hands, you're no longer grandfathered. Or if the sign is changed, you're no longer grandfathered. Well, It'd be curious. I, I would like to nitpick this thing with signs attached to buildings. Yeah. That's what I'd like to do. I don't think Number the six, government yeah. should tell you. How are you decorate the building? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you're paying all the fees, paying the taxes. Decorate the building how you want. Or your property. Yeah, you know. And, and also the you know the limitation of height and things like that. When this was written, we didn't have the expressway. We didn't have you know, there are certain businesses on the parkway who would benefit by having a sign that you could see from the expressway. Exactly. That isn't accounted for in this, you know, because it, didn't exist when they were yeah, right. Yeah. You know, it's a different we're in a, it's a different place, different time. But yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a ton of business, especially on the west side, who'd love to shoot something up in the air that you can see from the highway. Um, I bet McDonald's would rather have their own gold arches about 50 feet higher than mm -hmm. Well, I do know when I was campaigning that there were some people that are in Coast Parkway that wanted the back of their buildings, their name on it, so the people going down the and they easy. couldn't do it because they had expired uh, too much room on the front already. Well, yeah. if they're building, they should be able to take it. Yeah, Chevy says World Dress Pizza or whatever in the back of theirs. That was a yeah, big but that's problem. Been, isn't that? But yeah, I agree with you. That yeah. was a big problem. And, uh, when you I, I, know, I know there was one uh, forum I went to and they said, well, the reason they put those in a place because they didn't want to put up like a big tourist area like what we are. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. so, that was my argument. Yeah. I still go back to the enforcement, though. I mean, who's so surely it's not local police running around. What no, it's, it's, one of us has to complain. Call Carrie's office, yeah, and Carrie has to trot out there in his red bum car and say, "Can't do that." 
So Carrie's in in charge of that. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Am I, is that, no, that's right. I mean, basically that would happen. It is, it, well, it's just like, if anything, somebody has to report it, or those in charge happen to see it driving to work. Oh, look at that, that's, you know, mm -hmm. Right, that's and the other side of it is, is that conscientious business owner, such as yourself, who comes to the city and says, what can I do? What, what, how do I comply? And then they comply, and then there's the guy who comes in and just does what he does, and asks for forgiveness instead of permission. Yeah, nothing nobody not. does anything. You know, like I said, I've, after reading, the, reading this and driving up and down OSA Beach and went down KK, just kind of drove around, yeah. I saw dozens of violations, but they're friends of mine. I'm not going to turn them in. Yeah. So, and we need to look at off premise lines. I mean, that was one of my issues. And I'd, you know, I'd like to be able to see, you know, we have an amazing YMCA that half the people in this town doesn't know exists because the sign on their off premise location is three foot by three foot. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, to me, it's just, you know. But then, and then I don't know, like the ones over, uh, like at party proper and stuff like that, and the uh, security company, they're like billboards, but they're for the businesses that are right there. Well, because yeah. they were smart, and as soon as that billboard came available, they took it because it's right there by that business. Right. That does, that's not a part of this ordinance. Right. Well, that's off the front of sign. I mean, if, there, if I could get the billboard that's across from Airport Road right there by, uh, the Senex, sure. Uh, yeah, I might have a second. Right. But that's also a significant amount of money every month for me to have that. But now, each of those, you know, when we have like the advertising, the off premise signs, the advertising, like Lamar signs that are in the city. Mm -hmm. The city's making money off that, correct? Right? Because they have to pay a, a fee to have that sign. Not to my knowledge. Will? Lamar doesn't pay any money. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so what if it's associated with BTS? What if it's private property? What the same 2%? I don't know what they're, what they're doing. Lamar leases land to city land. Yeah, but but if it's not city land, you don't, they don't get paid. I don't know. Big Terry question. Maybe he'd be good at bringing them into meetings. Because I just, I also wonder how the taxes go on that. Because if Lamar, like, what are their offices in Wind Creek or something like that? But if they're making money off of a sign that's in Osage Beach, they lease land from private individuals. I know that. But they're doing like their business is in the sign business and they're doing business in our city. Are they paying taxes on that sign mm -hmm. when they sell a sign to somebody? Yeah. Well, I would say they have to be. They're in business. So they have to be paying taxes on yeah. services or product they're selling. But are they product. paying it to Lynn Creek or are they paying it to Ocean Beach? That's a good question. Like those those digital billboards on either side of the bridge. I know one of those costs like about a thousand or something just to run something on for a week or something like that. Yeah. That's a lot of revenue that's going on in our city. But if they're, you know, if they're paying taxes to where their corporate location is, which is Lynn Creek, City OCB didn't get anything out of it. Well, then you get also is the Lynn Creek taxes aren't as high as those Right. Creek, so that's something we looked into because it's, the cities aren't getting their cut off accordingly. You know, I mean, that's whether that, that's that, interesting. That's, that's opening sure. up a whole oh, yeah, huge can of worms. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and again, I'm not trying to dig into Lamar's business model by any means or anything like that. No, know? that's an interesting thought in regards to the city getting an equal share, that's for sure. But good luck with that. I mean, yeah. I would say. Because if, 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 if I said if, if he person... sells a chicken wing in Osage Beach, he has to pay taxes in Osage Beach. They're selling a sign in Osage Beach. They should. I agree. But are they? Or they, if they can opt out for the lesser tax, they're going to go for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. for, there's a one-time permit fee of 500 bucks for new off-prem sign installation. So, so I get the city gets 500 bucks that they put a one-time, but that's a perpetual income stream for Lamar or whatever. You know, not trying to pick on Lamar. So if we look at it like this, though, if Lamar is leasing a piece of private land from a private person. Then that person is making money. Then that person is required to pay the taxes on the money that they're making and report it to the IRS. Right, right. Mm -hmm. That would not be Lamar's responsibility. But Lamar is charging a customer. Right, under their license, under their location. I mean, that means, I mean, I'm trying to do, it's not apples to apples, but if I go over to Lake Ozark and I teach lessons, I don't pay Lake Ozark 
taxes for the amount of time that I'm spending over there teaching. I only exactly. paid in Ocean Probably Beach, which my life, where my license is. Hell no, I'm not gonna pay them for going over there. Well, it's like athletes when 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 the Raiders come play the Chiefs at Arrowhead. Each one of those guys pays tax to Missouri and to Kansas City, while because they're making money in the city at the time, even though their home base is back. Vegas. I mean, I'm just saying, if you're saying that, we're talking about plumbers and electricians and. All kinds of people are doing business all over the lake. Yeah. You're opening up like, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of that too. Yeah, contractors, all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different thing. So what are we talking about? <laughs> so, yeah. So obviously, I think we need to nitpick on this signage issue. Mm -hmm. And feel if we think it's too controlling and unfair. So um, I've kind of said earlier, I don't think they should tell you what you can put on your building. Yeah. I'd say everybody here needs to read it, you know, pick it apart, write questions you have about each part. Well, maybe and we can carry it back. And then we come in and we say, okay, why is this like this? I don't think we can make any kind of decisions about anything if we don't know how this already reads. Maybe yeah, I got Carrie Patterson here to explain it to us. Go down to each one and read them. Give us a claim to what it really means. If we have questions on it, but I think not having more than driving around, you see all three foot by three foot sign. Yeah, there's all kinds of you know things. Didn't have more than you know attached to your building. Right, yeah, it's 40 40 square feet. It has to be dealt with. Yes. So I've heard simplifying this ordinance, removing rules around. Attached signs, uh, grandfathered signs, yeah. off premise and, signs, and off to be premise height and, and sizes, you know. And then those those are the big catches I got, unless I missed anything. And of course, mm -hmm. throwing carry that. No, carry. Yeah. Uh, and it, it should your sign square footage be associated with your square foot of your building? I mean, why does it matter? If, I got a 1500 square foot building, but I want a huge sign on front of it. Why does Dearburg's get to take advantage of it? And Walmart, you know, they can put a huge one up. Why can't I? Yeah, theoretically, so we could have a, a, a multi million dollar business with a very small footprint mm -hmm. and pay more taxes than anybody, but only get to have a small sign. Not that it's, you know, it's a weird theoretical business that has a small footprint, makes a million dollars, and needs a big sign. But I like to go to extremes on some things to kind of. I understand they're, they're probably doing it to not clutter up the city and make it look trashy. But from what I read, is that that's determined by the how many Daniel foot of property you have. Highway frontage and highway frontage of building and building it. Well, you know, I mean, if you you wouldn't if you only had a hundred. 50 foot of highway frontage, you wouldn't want to put a 50 foot sign on it because your neighbor would, would block them out. Right. So I can see where some of these restrictions are needed. You know, uh, like say the expense factor of these signs, you wonder why it's putting those gargantuans up. You know? yeah. <laughs> but maybe we could have a, in conjunction with that, we could have a maximum and a minimum. So let's say, like Luke's saying, you got a guy who's got a 100 square foot building. That doesn't mean he gets to have a 50 by 50 inch sign. And I think there is, there, are, there, there is a minimum yeah, on there. There, there, is. Yeah. there is some size, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's a minimum, and, and I do like the way this is written because it's like a minimum. If basically the sign, the, the person can have a smaller sign if they want a smaller sign, but there's a minimum where you get at least whatever, like whatever I have to find. Yeah. This sign issue is going to take some time. Yeah. No parts of the sign can move. Including blood airing or rotating. This includes, but not limited to, pennants, streamers, or propellers. See them all over now. Yeah. They don't bother them. What's up? Yeah. Are they, are all why, not, why can't they move? The, the idea is that it's a traffic hazard and a distraction for drivers. Yeah. Is but, then, but then a marquee sign that has lights moving on it is a moment. Or just a sign that's text heavy. I was driving by one that has so much wording on it that I was sitting there trying to read it all. <laughs> but, 
I don't know. If you're talking about being a driving hazard, yeah. if they're going to allow a Ferris wheel while you're going over the bridge and you're going to see a Ferris wheel and people really look at that, oh. cars going to be well, side slapping each other. People <laughs> drive like that across the bridge already. Yeah. I, you want to know why? Them. Because they're reading those um, signs that only stay up for 30 yeah, seconds. I, I swear it's on the bridge the other day. Is that a moving sign? <laughs> That's a moving yeah. sign. And you're looking yeah, at it because you're like, I gotta read this really fast before it goes away. Oh yeah. I just hope they do something. It doesn't look very attractive right now, that's for sure. Um. <laughs> so I would like to say that we can have Carrie here next meeting to uh, mm -hmm. give us some layman terms on a lot of these regulations and, and what was the purpose behind them and are they trash and they need to go away. Yeah. Yeah. So which one do we do first? And time-wise, settlers or the water, or do we do both of them? I don't see why we couldn't do both. I, I, if you guys want to do both, one at a time, it's fine. Depends on how long they're going to take. I want to be there. Yeah. If we have night. people coming, though, yeah, it's going to take longer. Well, I, I think. We... Oh, I see. So, like next meeting, you're saying yeah. you want to talk to the food vendors next meeting, right? And then, and then maybe have Carrie come to the following, right? I just think it would be easier. It's that. probably going to take a little longer. I mean, I know I don't have all Sorry, hours of the night to read this 19 page thing. So, yeah. I mean, it's one thing to bring them in to have the discussion, but we got to have some output too. So, it's going to take a bit of time to actually yep. mm -hmm. concrete up what we really want to say and send forward. So, yeah, it would, it's, it would be smart to probably just do one at a time. Then maybe Carrie would be the easiest to see because that's down here already. I yeah. Mean, you know, uh, these there's, are. We're trying to make a little room <laughs> versus trying to uh, the other way around. I, I might suggest if you join the food truck first. First. Uh, mainly because if it is something you want to change, there's a certain time we would have to submit it to be on the November ballot. Oh. No. November? Yeah. That's true. What's that? November. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, point being, is it's got to be on a, a, a voted on. So there's no time limit for carrying, but there is a time limit oh. that we're going to put one on the ballot. Well, but isn't isn't the sign ordinance part of the sign ordinance was voted in by the people as well, right? So no, I don't think so. No, just the food. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what you do. I'm just saying, if by chance you do want to change the food truck, it does have to be on the ballot. To me, this is it April. I think we can't get it. I think we do the food trucks first, no. and we do it's going to take time right. to read this. Yeah. And, and it will and figure out what we want. Less your time spent. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, Tar just made a very good point. That, uh, <laughs> I'm just, that's why I got the shock face. I'm sorry. Okay. So she got the shock face oh, because we have to pay to put things on a ballot. Yeah. And each April. The mayor or alderman are already on the ballot, and once something is on there, you can add anything to it for nothing. If we were to put it on November, there's nothing we would have to pay for that. We don't want to do that. So it'd be April next year. Mm. Sorry. If you don't think. I didn't mean to do that. I was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, you need to do that. Put a sign up front. <laughs> Put a sign up front. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. So, on page one or two of this, the editor's note down at the bottom says a fee for directional signs was approved by the voters on April 6, 1993. Yeah. So, at least part of this was. Right. Just that specific part. Okay. Okay. I got you. I just, we're I talking. All the answers, though, because that is elections, so we didn't know how I got to get that. I don't know if it's a small part of you know, how much they changed in that. It looks like it was the same election. It was April 6th, election 93. Is that the same time the dude order exchange? Yeah. 1983. Uh, I, I bet they changed at the same time. Yeah, this, this actually, this is You're yeah. saying that it looks like the voters approved the moving signs? At least like a portion of it, yeah. Uh, Directional sign. Which means what exactly? Yeah. You said the fee was approved at that time, I believe. Does, is directional, I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me, but is directional uh, specific to moving signs or is it 
like go here type sounds. I'd be kind of curious. Any sign was lawfully registered or fixed prior to November 18, 1999. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know what it's referenced. I just I just saw that note down there, so it made me wonder if that ordinance has been voted by the people too. You know, in that case, we have to go back to vote on it. Well, it sounds like it's not so late. Next year. Yeah. Next year. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will. I would ask. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, go ahead. I've figured out what to say. It. Yeah. The location of, of the place, you know, how to get directions there. But what it means is definitely say moving sign. Okay. So directional is specific to arrows. Signs contains information designed to direct pedestrian or vehicle traffic to a location of a facility. Probably, you know, next right down this road for an arrow or take a right by Backwater Jacks kind of thing. Some of those things around here say things like that. Oh, okay, here's what it is. Do we do this? This is talking about directional signs posted by the city of Osage Beach, where a business located on Lake Road or other commercial or secondary collector street is not visible or approaching the intersection. A business directional sign may be erected on public property. Such directional signs should be constructed by the city and have the type determined by the city. Do we have any of those? And it sounds like you can pay 30 bucks to get your name. It's kind of like those signs coming off the highway. I'm saying, sure, yeah. That probably doesn't even apply anymore because the highway's been put in. I bet that applied to when it was only the parkway. Well, I'll bet. It's set for secondary locations, secondary streets. Which means it needs to be reworded to be a part of the off-premise sign. Yes. Paragraph. Businesses with existing off-premise advertising with 350, 300 feet and or located in the same intersection will not be allowed on the city directional sign until such 16 signage is removed. So if you already have a sign there, you, you can't be able to. But I don't, I don't think the city does any of it. We don't have that program going. I would doubt mm -hmm. I've never seen them. Yeah. But it's like those things, you can, it's top of the lake road. You can, the city puts a sign and says, hey, here's this resort, here's this restaurant, whatever. Kind of like what they have at like, Lake Ozark, really, when you're driving down there. Right. Are those maintained I'll by bet, the city? I'll bet it had to do with the, you know, businesses uh, coming yeah. off the parkway. Don't you think that somebody should go through that and find out what doesn't need to be in there? Just, yeah, well. We got here once Carrie explains all yeah. of them to us. Well, there, we, we can there you go. It. We need to take that out. We need to take yeah. that out. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Okay. But until we get clarification of what those tech, all the technical terms mean. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or in, in this case, if it's even used. Right. Yeah. 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 Is that on the computer? Yes. I think all of those. Yeah. I, I did the whole site, so yeah, I didn't get it. Well, yeah. All right, so, yeah. well, so who's going to reach out to Carrie to see if he, when he can meet us? And uh, well, I guess first thing is which which items do we tackle next? Food trucks. Food trucks. Yeah. Yeah. We tackle first. It'll be the easiest. Yeah. Get that knock that out of the way. And. That would obviously then the next meeting, whenever that is. Um, do we need to discuss how often our meeting is going to be? Do we want them once a month, twice a month? Well, if we're going to get this food truck deal on the ballot by November, I think we need to do a free quiz. Well, November, November, November. not November. It'll yeah. have to be next year. <laughs> next, April. April. Yeah. Okay. next year. Sorry, I heard you say November. I did. Yeah, he he likes wrong. November. Yeah. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, how much is it? How is that? Wow. We don't have to have on the ballot in November. Oh. In April, we already have a requirement to have the ballot. So to add additional wording to the ballot, it's not any additional cost. Nice. Now, what if it was an even year and there was already a November election? Even if it's not city, would you still have to do it? 
like a November election, like in an even number year when there's a lot of stuff on there already, just because the city doesn't have anything on that? Okay. So how often do we have to meet once a month? That's so what we did last time, did that yeah, We did once yeah. a month. Yeah. And Wednesdays are good, or this time work every third Wednesday, every first Wednesday. What was the, the conflict on the folks who couldn't be here tonight? Is that a standing yeah. conflict? Well, that's what I'm going to share with you. I just picked this day just because, just to get things rolling. Roll. I mean, there were no Tuesdays were better Tuesdays. for me. Well, I was going to say, and I should know that uh, Luke Lee Schumann, he has a church on Wednesday. So that's why he could not. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Yeah. That, that was a problem with Janice last time, too. She was she choir. choir. Yeah, that's right. Choir. Tuesdays work better for me. I don't know about you all. You all look easier, but. I'm retired. It doesn't matter. Whatever day. <laughs> and Tuesday works fine. Tuesday, Wednesday. 6 p.m. a good time for everybody? I got it. It's great. What day do we turn off? Well, that's the next thing. What, what type of cycle? Once every, again, just once a month. Yeah, and then and first, yes, second, third, fourth. You need another one. We just do it. Yeah, I don't know. But I'm, I'm trying that. to, you know, look at me. I'm late, right? I don't yeah. get the predictability of it, right? So would the second Tuesday? No, no the second Tuesday is planning commission. Okay, third Tuesday. Third Tuesday is fine with me. So we can set up a, a just a constant cycle. What's that date? I'm sorry. Eighteen. Third, third Tuesday. It's something. What is there something? The third no. Tuesday. Is that okay? Third Tuesday? I'm fine. Yeah, it you know, works for me. Um, mm -hmm. I guess I should look and see. I think uh, I need right. They have the 10 meeting. I'm sorry? They have the 10 meeting. So the April 18th would be the next one. Do you, always, do you always send the agenda and everything out by email? I will not be here. Okay. I won't be here. I don't think I can be either. I need to be. What's, to what's our quorum again? How many do we six. need? Six. 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 Yeah, we'd be down to six. Well, no. Based on who's here right now, we'd be down to five. Well, we have what well, two more? Yeah. I mean, we can pick any day. Can you Tuesdays. just send them? They might be a good move. Janice and Lee and Dr. Paula Brown are the other three. Could find out from them what would be good for Fourth. them. Well, is there a good one? Like your baseball game. I'll be on the TV. Strike one. You tell it. What about um, the 25th? Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> uh, scratch that. Uh, unless someone else, unless uh, someone else wants to leave me. But, um, what about the fourth? I know it's only two weeks away. But... Yeah. Can we get them here? I don't see why not if they want it done. Fine. So I can do the fourth, first Tuesday of every month. Any conflict with the city on that one? What did you say now? The third Tuesday? First. First. First Tuesday. First. Sorry to be the stick and mode on that one, but. There will be times when people can't make it anyway. Yeah. yeah so we're, gonna, we're going with the fourth, April 4th. Sounds like it, yeah. So we need to contact uh, the coalition. Actually, they, Contact the coalition and yeah. see if one or two representatives can come here. I'm sorry. He, you've got who's going to do it? Um, I can do it, or I, I don't know. Do like I said, I can reach out to Tristan, but that's the only person. That's, that's, yeah, that's the number I have. Um, and Tristan, we can and you know it. Yeah. it might be rather than just the vendor, this coalition. I wonder if they've got someone that could, it might be better to have that person here as well. And he's on the coalition. Tristan is. Oh, yeah, he's, he's actually on it. I thought he just knew of them. So. And the head of the coalition is that gal at Ashley's, I think, the coffee shop. And he, he knows her very well. So he, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll reach out. But you have his number? I do. I'll send it to you. All right, cool. Uh, I have a new number, so I'll send you my new number. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I need yours too, Luke. 
And just to summarize real quick, um, simplifying the ordinance for signs, removing rules around signs attached to the building, uh, grandfathered signs, how that works, height and size of off-property signs to include directional signs, um, and then having Carrie here at the yeah. next meeting. It seems like the few action items from the signs. Yep. And we're then, not going to have carry on the fourth, though, correct? What's that? When was carry coming in? Well, we're doing food trucks first. First, food food trucks. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. then yeah. carry would be yeah. May, the next one. Uh, okay. whatever, Tuesday, first Tuesday of May. Okay. <laughs> or at least plan on our meeting cycle to be the first Tuesday. It would okay. be just as necessary, I guess. But and I will be busy with carry. We, we talk quite a bit, and I'll let him know what we talked about and get his ideas, at least before we're doing the next meeting. All right. Can and I make a motion? Absolutely. To adjourn. I second. Good. All right. Okay. Meeting adjourned. It's All a right. great meeting. Thanks, Thanks, I knew you'd be good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 We texting you. Good. Glad to hear that. It's chaos. It's chaos. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if I can get that oh. so I can look. Oh, yeah.